Hey guys, just Janny. Today I'm going to show you how I make my claw ring. You're going to need a spoon flattened out. If you want to hammer the spoon bowl for texture, it needs to be done on the back side for this because we're actually bending the handle over and around the back side. So the back of the spoon bowl will be the front of the ring. So if you want to, you go ahead and flatten it out. If you want it hammered, get that done, and then I will show you how to bend it. Okay, we have our flattened spoon. I hammered mine. We want to put the pattern side facing forward. So go ahead and put it in your vise. You guys know I like my leather strips so we don't scratch it all up. We want the top of the spoon bowl in line with the top of the vise because we're going to do two bins here. So if it's already in the right spot, you won't have to adjust everything for the second bend. Okay, first bend is from the top of the spoon bowl. It's about three quarters of an inch. Let me grab the ring so I can show you. This right here is the bend we're making. It's this 90 right here. So from the top of the spoon bowl, which is back here, it's about three quarters of an inch. So right about just before the pattern ends up here, on our bend right about in there. I just have my bailing pliers. Hopefully this one's soft enough I can bend it. So I'm just going to put them where I want the bend and it's going to be 90 degrees to the left. Okay, mine's not as quite, not quite as high as I wanted it. I'll go ahead and bend it by hand the rest of the way. Hopefully I don't break it. That looks about 90, so that's our first bend. Now the second bend, we're gonna hammer it backwards. I have a rawhide mallet. Uh, you can use a rubber mallet or a hammer if you don't mind hammer marks. We're going to hammer it back away from you. I go all the way flat with the vise. So it should look like this. Now let's take it over and I will show you how to finish bending it. Okay, for the next part, we're going to just Go ahead and bend this the rest of the way over so that that pattern shows on top of the ring. I'm just going to use my rubber, or, sorry, my rawhide mallet and my anvil. You can use anything you have. Do it on your workbench. Let's uh, hammer it over and don't smash your thumb. Okay. So we've got our bends. Now we're going to go over to the arbor press and I'll show you how to make it into a ring. Okay, we have our spoon ready. I'm going to start with my bender press with this really long pen. Because this is so wide, the others only reach about halfway. So I want to get started with something that reaches all the way across. So if you're using the bender press, get out the biggest one. So I'm starting with what's going to be the inside of the ring, the back of the pattern, this way. And I'm going to start right across the center. Because if I start on the edge, it kind of wants to push this, and then it's not in line like this. It gets pushed off over the side. So, like so. Just start that first bend 
right in the middle. Now, before I get too far, if I keep this exactly where it is, it's going to wrap around the top of the spoon, not angled across the way I had it. So what I do is once I get it that first bend, that helps hold this in place so we get that look. We want we want to keep this kind of 90 degree curve look but we want this side to come down at an angle so to get that to happen hold this like a vise and use your hand your mallet whatever and tap this over just a little and we'll tap it over more as we go that way you get it where you want it. I mean, maybe you want yours more. Um, more straight across. I have a couple that came out that way and I just like it angled down. Now I'm putting a little bit of a bend all the way across just so it's easier when we get all the way around. Let's get it started a little bit. Mm, that felt like a crease. Let me see if I can fix that. And what, let me show you what I meant. You can see when it hit the edge of the spoon, it made almost a 90 degree right there. So I was trying to, I'll try and see if I can get it rounded out before I finish. If you're using the bender press, Yes, my vinyl block is twisting off to the side. You can see it is not in straight if I straighten it. Um, yes, that is supposed to happen because the way this fits in, it, it just twists your vinyl block around. Okay, so far, now if you want it nice and big, you can leave it like that. That is pretty big. So I like to switch to the one that has the silver on it. This is about a size six. Probably will only get it down to about a six and a half if you really went small. which you don't have to if you don't want to.
Anyway, you keep working on it until you get the size and the look you want. I hope you enjoyed making this with me. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more tutorials like this one.